Hi everyone and welcome to the Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now, episode number 13. Today we're going to take a look at the mobile studio and the new app that was released actually yesterday. And I actually call this as a part one because this is just the intro. I haven't been playing around that much with it myself. And I'm pretty sure that we'll reach another one or two sessions about this one because it's so new and people really like it including myself so who is the one speaking that's me goran lundquist aka the witch doctor for those who doesn't know me i've been playing around with service now for a couple of years doing everything from architecture to technical to mentoring and all that stuff i'll uh, keep my own away i see i haven't updated my information really i actually got into the service now MP for 2019 as well uh, and of course, need to do some advertisement. Also, written a book called The Witch Doctor's Guide to Service Now. Uh, probably will help you. I really hope it will. And I really, really hope that you will like it. Get a few points here what you can find in it and what you can expect. Just go to Amazon.com and search for Service Now, and it should pop up uh, both the paper book and the Kindle version. But enough about me. And of course, I've got to say it if you want, you can find. I always forgot where to point over there in the end. Over here I point with the mouse instead. If you want to connect, just hit me on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, or whatever. You also got my GitHub repo down there where I will save all the code that I show you in these videos. So I forgot the last point, let me go back to the PowerPoint. If you hear some background noises, it's because my wife has some friends over with the kids and they're watching some uh, song contest here in Sweden called Eurovision. No, Melody Festival. Uh, try to avoid that if you can. I'm lucky to be upstairs recording this video instead. So we're going to take a look at the Lenda, the new app of course. Uh, how does the mobile studio look like, the one that you're actually building the app. Uh, what is it in the baseline and I just and the rest we'll see where it ends. We have a, a long night for me I guess with all this singing in the background. So first of all having kind of a, a crappy, not crappy, it's a really good phone but I can't get it to connect to mirror to my computer so I downloaded some kind of crazy app called uh, Menu but it, it does it work so it doesn't really look like a phone phone but at least I have the app installed and what we are actually looking for is I actually see if I can get Google how do I do that one hmm. anyway the app you're looking for is called ServiceNow Agent there is one the older app that is being renamed to Service now classic it's got an update as well first i thought that was the new app way but it wasn't and then the new service now agent came along and when you have installed it it looked like this you can hit the plus sign to set up which instance you want to connect to if you have created a qr code for that one you can of course just click this one and take your phone and just scan the qr code instead uh, the docs for the mobile app is really really good I actually think that I have, yeah, here we go. For example, for the QR code, you can just go to the DAX, search for create QR code, and it just tells you what you need to put in, then go to a QR code generator, and then you're all up and ready. And yeah, they're having fun downstairs. So, I have already done this part, just name my one PDI. Then you can see that when we try to log in, it actually opens up the browser in the in the mobile phone where you log in. And in my case, I'm going to log in as Luke, because I know that Luke actually has some approvals as well. And I'm just gonna fill in his password. Don't want to have a ton of people logging into mine. And this is how it looks like. Now this one actually is a phone laying down but the, the creepy part is that if i say no i would like to have i get like this and it's kind of weird and i'll probably get neck issues if i try to have it like that so let's switch back like this it's still the same thing 
This is the out of the box one, besides the Witch Doctor Mobile, which is not out of the box. But you will have field service, incident, and my approval out of the box. And I, before I click into this, just going to show you, and I have some notes just so I don't forget the stuff. One thing that is really new is the offline mode. Uh, where you actually can set that now I would like to go offline. You have to manually say I'm going offline, download the files. Uh, as right now, you can't actually do this on the PDI because you need to activate the plugin, of course, which isn't available for PDIs. Um, I reach out to the service now people I know about this and hopefully we can get that. Just like pretty much we got the, the other stuff on when London came along. Hopefully. The, the product owners allows us to test the offline as well. Otherwise, this is the menu, just a, a few settings. There is a logout down here that you don't see. You see a little bit of red stuff down there. But this is how it looks like from the start. I haven't found out if you can like change the pictures or something like that. Probably not in, in this version. Remember, it's the first version, so it will probably be a lot cooler when a New York comes around. But this is how the application looks like, and we'll get back to that. Let's hit Studio, and some might be tricked that when it says Mobile Studio, it's somewhere else, but it's actually inside the studio. Uh, and, of course, you can see I have uh, done some testing. Uh, but if you would like to reach the out of the box stuff, you go into the application called ITSM Mobile. From here you can see that we actually have something called mobile development. And just before we click in and take a look, I'm just going to switch to let's create a new just to test. If I create a new application, and this means that you will want a new application here. This is what we would like to have. Then we'll just go in and I'll do YouTube videos. I'll create that one. And then when you get that one into the studio, what you need to do is hit create application and then you have mobile development. This is where you click create. And then of course you need to create a name and that is the name of as I understand it, the name you get here. So let's just hit test YouTube. And this one won't pop up unless it has some other stuff in it. In this case, some applets, which is uh, we'll go into deeper later on. Uh, but let's just go back to the out of the box one and take a look at that one instead. Because there's so much cool stuff and just like I did with um, the flow designer or the virtual agent of that come, going in and trying to build all the advanced stuff from scratch is kind of hard. I usually just go into the, the stuff the service now has built and do some reverse engineering to try to understand how is this actually built, go through the docs uh, and look around. So basically, let's go to our mobile, let's go into incidents. In this case, we have my incidents with a couple of uh, applets. You have group incidents with a couple of applets. And that means that if you go, let me see, there is so much done here. Let me see. No, how that one. Mobile application incidents. And here we have. Uh, not the group applet. I hate I can't find that one. Let's go to instant just for fun. Loading, loading, loading. Here we go. Uh, I think it's still loading. As you can see, there is a lot of just drag and drop. You can't see so much uh, different. Uh, coding places, if you can name it like that. We have details, activities, you can see they're not so much coding at all. And when I'm clicking around, 
I can realize that. Let's go in and see. So we are looking at the active incense. Let's remove this one. Close. Okay. And take a look at this one. So this one is called my active incense. First thing you need to do is define where do we get the data for this applet. And this applet is active incense. This one. So I click on this. And of course, Luke should see. Let's see if I can click on someone else. Huh. Active. I just did this. I wonder if it's a bug or something else. Let's do like this. Let's kick out Luke. And let's log in with Beth. Because I looked. Uh, do 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 says click in. Okay, okay. Beth. Angeline and I'll just do my password outside so I can keep my instance fresh. So we'll ask Beth now. And just go back, you can see Beth doesn't have the correct role, so she can't actually see the field service. But that's just another thing. Yay! There's one active. So this is the first step. And then if I click, we have a lot of more information. You have all the fields, you have the activities, and you can also define if you want related list as well. If you are still in the list, I can swipe to the left with my finger or <laughs> with my mouse at the moment, and you can set up actions as well. So you don't really need to go into this one to actually do it. As well, if I click activity, you got this one, and you can add a lot of different record, instance of picture, add a comment, for example. And you, if you click on the wrong place, you can deactivate and say it should be a work note <laughs> instead. Uh, I know I'm clicking around a lot. Hopefully you can follow along. So this is how the app looks like. We have the details, then we have another tab for activity, and then we can set up related list as well. So let's take a look how this looks like in the studio. First of all, we have the activities, active incidents. Only one record, and why is that? Well, what you first do is you define the, what they call the data item. And I actually don't know if I can, no, I can't. I thought I could like click into that data icon, but let's go in and find it, my active. And why shouldn't it be from A to C? Come on. My active instance. There we go. And this looks like pretty much any other clinicians. We have the naming, which table we're going to query, and then of course different settings. In this case, you can see we only want to see the ones that are not three, the ones that are not one and two. Priority is not one of them. It's not resolved. It's assigned to me, and it's not the VRP. What you can do as well, you can of course group them. But you can also ask the user for input. And I will show that in my own application where I actually ask for the, um, the priority and then I will filter the incidents on that priority. But first you need to define this one. So this one will fetch the incidents that are assigned to the logged in user. Then we decide, okay, in the first view, which kind of fields do I want to see? And where should it pop up? We have the list, we have the short description, color, status, instant number, and priority. You can see we have the different values here. We have E1, E2, and if I scroll down, I can actually see where does these things pop up. If I remove the E6, which is priority, you can see that now it just says E6. So you can actually see where should E6 be. So let's go back and put it over there. So it's a really good and easy way to see where will this thing show up. Then of course you can have different 
uh, styling as well. You can see here we have different states, different colors uh, on the states and so on. And the colors you can see in progress is the green one and you have that one as well. Uh, functions, you can see you have the three functions. You can decide should the function be on the top menu, the three dots. We don't have any top menu here, so that's probably, I'm guessing, why it's hidden. If I swipe, I have the three functions. Do, 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 do. Uh, I will not go into details how you can build them at the moment right now. Next step we have is the and that's actually probably because I haven't really drilled down into them. So you probably will have watched this video for an hour and looking at me scratching my head trying to understand how it looks like. And I guess you can have more fun uh, doing that. So let me just figure it out, then I'll show you. Then we have details, and that's the, actually the same thing again. Which fields are we going to see? Uh, header and body when we click on a specific record like this. And here you can see are all the different fields. When we come to header, we are at the same top. This is the header one, the, the first row. Then the rest thing is the body, and there you can actually add how many fields you want. If I scroll down, you can see the body will just continue go like this. And of course you can style it just like everything else. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, if, if I click properties, you get this screen. And normally you do this when you create it from the first time. Here is of course the name, description, you will find description on this little one here. So if I click on this information, you can see what you actually get from it. You can choose a different icon and colors. You can decide if this applet should be available offline if the user checks the offline uh, functionality. Then you can decide which kind of applet should this be. This one is a list and since this is already done I can change it. Then you can actually decide how deep should this one go. If I don't want the related list to be there I just uncheck that one. The same thing goes with the activity stream. If I don't want those two to be there, I can easily just uncheck or check them, which is quite nice. And that is, of course, let me go to a record, the top ones here. If I uncheck those, those two won't be visible. So <coughs> we have the details, we have the activity log, and actually, you as I understand, you can't really do much here. And then you can, of course, define which relate list should it be visible. So it doesn't seem to take the relate list you have on the normal, um, the normal UI. So that was that simple one. Uh, let me just show you one with Luke before we go into my own that I created. And I'm just going to show you the simple um, approval version. So let me hit this one and let's go in with Luke and I'll just go offline. Here we go. Enter, log in. Now we'll look. Go to my approval. Got two different um, applets. I have the pending approval and here you can see there are a few of them. I can swipe left, react approve, or I can click on them, read a little bit more, and of course you define which fields you'd like to see. Here you can see I have the top menu now with the three dots, and approve react. And I don't think I can swipe right here, no I can't, I need to use that menu, the top menu. Then I can go back, and here of course I can just swipe, and for example approve. And that records has been approved. You can see it changed approval here. I also noticed, let's see here. Hmm. If I go back to pending, it's gone. No, oh, I got the filter one. Wonder what that one is. Hmm. Hey look. 
that's cool. I can filter this as well, that's pretty good. Okay, even seeing or not the search. That's that's nice. Let's just see Cisco. Let me see reset and short description and can I type in Cisco? Yeah. Ah, okay, I can type to find that one. And there was quite a few. Huh. Wonder if that filter will keep being saved. So if I go back to my approvals, pending. No, now it's gone. So the filter is gone when you when you go back in that. Quite good, I guess. So that was Luke. Let me just uh, go back to Beth. Pink. Let's take. Let's test Beth again. Let's see. Uh, and a shout out if anyone knows a good, better uh, app to handle the the mobile on uh, showing stuff like this for a One uh, Plus mobile. If that's something special, uh, just uh, give me a DM or write in. Uh, in the YouTube comments that would be helpful so which doctor mobile I'll create that one you can see I have two folders just name them folder number one and folder number two so let's go to my app instead and that one and strange thing I don't know is this the one where I'm just looking to see where I can go back to see the different folders because as you can see here there's no place it actually says folder number one and folder number two hmm. I guess I need to go back and look at that later on Mobile menu application. They're probably the old ones. <laughs> yeah, well, I won't waste your time for that one. I'll take a look at that later on. So, look at my log. I have a list of all incidents. Here we go. This is how it looks like. Uh, but. And it's really, really easy because I would like to have the folder one. Let's do one from scratch. That might be even better. Wonder if I can just create another one like this. Trial and error, trial and error. Let's hit that one. Yeah. Uh, my new app. <laughs> and I'll just make a thumb up, a oh, handshake. And we'll make that orange great and now you can see we have my new app hmm. then I'm here I can say create folder new app folder and then I can put all the different app Applets I want in this folder, and then I can just just create another one, another folder, and of course you don't need to name it folder, but just like you saw on the out of the box ones. This is one folder. This is another one. But it's kind of interesting. How do I get to the folders after I logged out of the studio? If I want to create another one, hmm, interesting. Anyway, let's create an applet. Here you can see, you can decide what kind of, and now I just realized I there was one more thing from the other box one I'm going to show you. You can create a list view, a specific web map, just like the, the incident, critical incident map you have in the other box one. You can make a calendar, you can actually go in and look at users, a group list, is basically more like you have different categories perhaps you can go in and click to get into different so it's pretty much group by and a URL and I'm going to show you the URL just for the fun of it if we go and of course 
Beth doesn't have field service because that's the one I needed, I think. So let's just relog real fast to Luke. And we'll at least I remember his password now. Here we go. And Luke. I think it was field service. If I scroll down on field service, I have knowledge. If I click on this one, you can see it actually open up the browsers and redirects to the out of the box knowledge base portal. So it uses both the that one and let me just see if I can quickly show you how it looks like in the real app if you can see stuff. Let's see the camera. Ah, oh, it's really crappy. But basically, this is how the app looked like. And it, it's it's kind of nice, and you can just exit and get back to the the real app. So that is the URL applet. So let's go back. If you want to make a list, my all. I'm just going to look all incidents. Uh, and then I can of course decide which one do I want to do. I just want to have the details and the activity stream. New. Then of course I need to select a data item. I have only two. Um, let's create a new one as you can see. Active incident. I'll just select uh, incident of course. And I'll just say active is true. And I'll hit save. That's it. Let's go to my applet. And then you can see active instance is there. And now it fetches the fields. So I can say on E1, which is over here, I want to have a number. And then on E2, I want to have caller. And I see you can, I can dot walk if I want as well. And then on E3, I would like to have short description. I don't need to fill out all. I can't double click, I hate that. I hope they will add that one. So let's save that one as well. Now let's hit details and just say, on the header I also want the color. I'm just going to show you how it looks like. And on, on the body I want to have the description. I, I can't learn that I can't double click I guess. I'll hit save. I'll go to my app. Uh, go back. I'll click not with doctor. Uh, can I reload this one? Yeah I could. Yeah, there we go. There is my new app. Click on that one. We have a new folder, all in sense. Here you can see number. And I don't have the rate list because I didn't check that one. So it's really, really simple to build these apps when you just want the basics, to be honest. Uh, you can see I just click around and it's popping up like crazy. Now, I am for the last thing going to show you about the user input and I told you I've done it on my witch doctor so if I click on this one list of all incense which is kind of weird what priority uh, three and then I get these incidents if I go back and say one oops oh, I get a different uh, set of incidents as well and how do I do that? Very, very simple. Uh, I'll just go back to that application. Uh, ah, I'm in that application. That's even better. Wait, no, I'm not. Huh. Let's go see. Do, do, do. List of all incidents. That's the one. Uh, and we actually would like to have the data item, of course, because that's where you define this. So I'll click on the data item. 
and here you can see this one which looks kind of crazy priority is what priority hmm let's remove that one just to show you what I did is that I'll remove that again active is true and priority uh, and down here you can see that I added a parameter which you pretty much just say name and what type of parameter uh, in this case I, I choose the string and there's a really good description on these ones in the docs as well what you should use when you should use it and so on uh, you have also of course dates and so on if you want to use it say from when do you want to see the instance perhaps created by dates and so on uh, let's say cancel I created one called what pri priority now I can go and use this icon with many names the cannonball and I don't know everything I like the cannonball that's, that sounds like cool so let's click on that one and you can see here I can actually select that one so that is what happened this is how I set it up when I did that then I will get this one as an input and just for fun let's try it out and let's uh, add another one from date and let's make that a date so let's put this out as created by so we can let the user define from what date forward should this created by date be so let's save it and created not created by of course created date uh, after and let's select date like that I'll hit save and go back to my app and that's kind of will it do I need to reload or something or does I just click okay I don't let's see if I can just do like this reload the app from here I'll go in list now I'm starting warrant did I hit save yeah I did that no, uh, let's go like this and log out then. I log in again. Bet. And I'll do like that. And we're back on track. We'll hit the. Not that one, the witch doctor. And the from date doesn't pop why I just need to test it on my reel to see if it's not uh, which doctor hmm can you only have one no you should be able to have multiple why doesn't that work <laughs> so it's the data item I saved that one let's go in here let me just do like. Oh, I don't want to do that either. Hmm. Now I save that one as well. Only just double click faster on my own. I'll just give me a second. Beth, you go in this. No, I just admin here. And let's just double check. Hmm. I'll go into the Witch Doctor mobile. This time. no, doesn't work. Huh? That's weird. I'm just gonna yeah, get it away, and I'll choose that one again. Uh, I'll just add number. It's still just for experiments. Let's save that one. And then it's easy to see if it just shows number now. So let's go back. Witch Doctor, all one. So now they had taken that change, but not the parameters. Hmm. That's kind of weird. I'm just going to do this for fun. 
pray to this. Hit save. Which doctor? Hmm. Is that the bug I found? Do I need? Because now it's been saved. It still says what part? Huh. Security, I can't really do so much. I'm going to check my mobile as well. I think I'm going to file this as a bug and see what they say. Huh. That's weird. Uh, wonder if I parameters doesn't pop up here. Just thought if I can find an example with multiple. Well, anyway, I'll just uh, <coughs> keep that for part two of next video, I guess. Uh, I think we've been recording for quite enough now. I'll wrap it up. So we pretty much went through the new app, Service Now Agent. It's called. You can download both for the iPhones and for Android versions. You have the QR code, of course, which is kind of nice. You have the new uh, offline, which you can test. I hope we can get it to the, uh, the PDI soon as well. You have the out-of-the-box one, the instant and the field services. You go to the normal studio and then you hit the uh, the ITSM mobile or the field service mobile depending on which of these mobile apps you would like to play around with. Just click on this one and then you can actually drill down in all those cool stuff they have. You have for example the, the actions with the approvals, the assigned to me and so on. You can actually go in and see, okay assigned to me, how does that look like? How do I build a function like that? And you can see that there is a lot of stuff that you can do and you need to drill down and understand. Uh, the other thing I need to check up, of course, how do I get back to the folders so I can move around perhaps applets or create new ones uh, and so on. Can I reuse applets? I have no clue. Uh, so there's a lot of questions for part two as well. So that's about it. Don't forget my book if you haven't bought it. Uh, go to Amazon. I think it's enough to hit service now actually and I think, yeah. You have me on there if you want the Kindle one or the paperback version as well. So I think that's about it for today. Have a good night and see you soon with part two up.